So what, what are other treatments other than the vitamin C that you might use to treat cancer patients to help them to, with, that immune, well, well, with that immune compromised? I have, there's so many possibilities. One of the, one of the treatments I like is uh, there was a, a tea uh, developed in, in Canada, which for some reason or other would... Uh, Will, st will stop the growth of cancer in some people. Are you talking about Essiac tea? Essiac, thank yeah, you. Yeah, okay, Essiac tea, great. Yeah, the, uh, what was the name, Obi Jabwa, Obi Jabwa Indians in Canada used to use it for hundreds of years, Yeah. and they gave it to Nurse Renee Case. And, and her name backwards is Essiac. Essiac, yeah, so you've seen good results with Essiac yeah, tea. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen some really excellent results with that. My grandmother, who died of cancer in 98, was diagnosed in the late 80s, and she was supposedly terminal. She used SEAC-T for 10 years, and made her it gave her another decade. Yeah, I had a patient who had uh, uh, bowel obstruction, and they, and they opened him up, and he had a cancer of his cecum where the appendix was, mm -hmm. and it cut out. But he had it already spread to his liver, and and uh, so he was kind of doomed by conventional things. And instead of taking chemotherapy, he took SEAC-T. And, uh, and he went for years under my care, and, and, and the tumor never came back. Hi, my name is Bonnie Freeman. I would like to tell you my story as far as a cancer survivor. In 2000, I was so sick, I didn't know what, I, what was going on with me, but I didn't pay any attention to it. I went to the doctor. But it was just for a routine to get more insurance, uh, increase my insurance that I had. And they denied me. So I went to uh, my regular doctor to find out why they denied me. Well, a test was run and there was a, there was a spot on my liver. And then uh, I come to find out that it was gonna, I was gonna have to have treatments because it was cancerous. They did the liver biopsy. I didn't really believe the doctors at the time because I really, I was tired, but I just couldn't take that. So I went to another doctor and they told me the same thing. So this third doctor referred me on to, um, for it to be treated in other words, for me to get my treatment. I'm sorry, I can't think of the word now. But when I went to him, he told me that I would need a uh, river, river virus and interferon. So I'm saying, why do I have to take this? So I told him I would get back with him. And I decided, no, I don't really want to do this. I had a friend named Barbara who introduced me to Jeff Beck who had something called Azatic tea, which I had no idea or what it was going to be like. Aldi tea. Aldi tea. Uh, the Aldi tea was um, dry. I had to mix it with water, boil it, and I left it in the refrigerator. So I said, okay, what I got to lose? I'm going to die in eight months. Eight months. So I went on and took it in the mornings, at lunch, and at bedtime. I did this for quite some time, and I really started feeling better. And so I didn't know what else to do. So I said, well, what I think I'll do is go on back to the doctor and see what he said, let him run some more tests, and see what's going on. Well, when I went back, he didn't really recognize me. The nurse came out, it was funny, the nurse came out and she called my name, and she looked past me for someone else. And I said, it's me. And so the doctor, when I went in, he asked me, he says, well, what have you been doing? And so I told him about the tea and how much I felt better and how much the energy I had. And uh, he said, well, the test re results come back that you don't need any treatments. And I was so ecstatic, I called everybody I could think of and let them know about how, in just that short period of time, that this cancer could disappear. I have went back. My cancer's still gone. I still take the tea because number one, it removes the toxins out of my body. And I love to have the energy I have. And knowing liver cancer is something you can't play with, I felt like the treatments was the best thing for me. So I still take it.
I feel good. And by the way, I was supposed to be dead in eight months in the year 2000. This is 2012. I have a three-year-old grandson, and I have an eight-year-old grandson and that I would not have been able to see. Just over, just by taking a tea, I can enjoy. Seeing them grown, I know I can. Thank you for letting me share this testimony with you. I am Esther Gilbert. I have been diagnosed with colon cancer in 1994. I refused surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation, but I elected the SEAC protocol. In August 2003, I am still cancer-free. All right, Rowan. We, uh, well, last time I saw you, you had a, uh, a different situation. You had a growth on your head, and it was cancerous, correct? Right. Well, Rowan, well, start with your name. Just give us your My name My name and your story. is Roland Witzgall. I live in North Andover. I went to a dermatologist in Andover because of a lump I found on my bald spot. They took a biopsy of the uh, lump and they told me it said I had cancer. So I went to the Dana Farber and Lawrence and they said that it was beyond their uh, expertise. So they sent me to the Dana Farber in Boston. They looked at it and they said that they had to remove it and do a biopsy on it after it was removed. After it was removed, I would then have to have plastic surgery done on the spot where it had been removed, and they would have had to put a graft from my leg onto my bald spot, which I imagine would have made a pretty ugly looking <laughs> sight. So in the meantime, my cardiologist told the oncology surgeon that my heart wasn't strong enough to have an operation. So I was wondering what to do. And then all of a sudden out of my long time memory bank, I remembered SEAC T. So I went on the internet and I looked up SEAC T and I found Brian's website, which is uh, discount hyphen SEAC hyphen T dot com. And I got all the information I needed I went to see Brian. I got the uh, SEAC powder from him. I made the tea, and on May 9th, I started drinking the tea three times a day. Within a month, the lump started to shrink. Then a month later, the lump was almost completely gone. I'm still taking the tea, and I'm gonna continue to take it, I think, for the rest of my life. If it, could, if it makes protection against cancer, I'm going to see my new dermatologist on September 6th to see what she thinks about it. And I'm completely satisfied. Um, let me see that beautiful scalp you can, of yours. You can look at, see the yes, top of my I head? See, yes, It used to be a lump about the size of a quarter and it continually bled, so I had to go to the walk-in clinic every week to have the dressing changed and, uh, because I, the dressing would be filled with blood. And you did bring by your... Uh, your I brought the biopsy diet. report, yes. which says I have cancer. Basically, yes, and it does have spindle cell assistant... That's yeah, so, it mixosarcofibrosa down at the bottom right-hand corner. Okay. That's, that's cancer. Gotcha, okay. Well, that's uh, your story, and I really appreciate you sharing that with us. Well, let me tell you about my story. My story dates back to uh, 2011. Uh, I went to get my checkup for my doctor over on Colorado Street, Dr. Gillespie, and he always do blood work at a certain period of time when I come. So this particular time, I went to get my checkup. He said, we're going to do some blood work today and do a urine special and all this kind of stuff. So they did that, and uh, they don't ever tell you anything the same day about your, about your test. So about a week later, uh, he called me. He said, George, you need to come by the office. This is the 2011. And I goes over there, and he says, man, he says, your PSA level is way up, 20, 26 points. And I said, 26 points don't sound high. But like Ellie Young says, when you get above four, you got a problem, a serious problem. 
So he said, what we're going to do, we need to send you out and give a test. So he sent me to Dr. Curry over at the Gamma's Clinic. And Dr. Curry checked me out and he said, look, we need to do a biopsy on you to see what's going on. And so they took eight samples. And about a week later, he called me back and said, uh, George says, well, seven of your samples looked good. He said, but uh, one of them had a little spot on it, and that spot could be something like cancer. And right away, I, got, I started getting paranoid. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have cancer, that's the first thing happened. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been so prone to say cancer is a killer. Mm -hmm. It's no kill for them. Yeah. And one day, we was, one Saturday, I went to church, Brother Young was up to Chula. And uh, I was telling Brother Young about it. And Brother Young always said, he used the word son. He said, son, let me tell you something. <laughs> he said, I believe I got something to help you. And he said, I'm going to order it for you, and uh, you pay me for it. Well, the first time he ordered it, he gave me a bag of it. And I started taking it. And uh, I didn't go back to the doctor because I didn't want no bad news that right then. <laughs> you know, you, 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 sometimes we, we get bad news and we don't want to go back to hear that bad news again from that same physician because you know that cancer sometimes just takes the air out of, let all air out of you. And so finally I started taking it and I started taking it. And about a month or two I went back to my, my doctor. I didn't go back to Dr. Kurt who did the biopsy. And he checked me again. My, my, gave me a test on my, my blood count, checked my blood count on my, my blood. And he said, uh, George, he said, it's going down. Now, it went down from 26 to 0 0.4. Mm -hmm. 0 0.4. In one month's time. One month's time. Mm -hmm. One month's time. I was, let me tell you, I was praying, while I'm sitting in his, when he told me that, I'm sitting in the wait in the room, you know, the doctor pushing in the room, and I'm praying to the Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. And he told me to come back in about a month. Well, I went back in about a month. And it was steady dropping, like 0 0.2. So for the last, I know, three, three years, I've been taking this tea. And let me tell you this, I've been taking high blood pressure medicine ever since I was 17. Hmm. And today as I stand here, I don't have any high blood pressure. Amen. 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 I, let me tell you, blood pressure perfect. Check my PSA levels. That was this year. Perfect. Perfect. I'm standing here telling you that this tea worked. I just bought a bag before we come in here. Just I, said, Brother, I just made my last and a bag of tea. Bag of tea will make two and a half quarts. I just made my last bag I had at home yesterday, and that'll last me about two weeks, or maybe two and a half weeks. But I just got me another bag while ago, so that'll carry me over another month. Mm -hmm. But I want you to know I can't. And I understand, Brother Jeff, Jeff take the Food and Drug Administration, I want you saying something going to kill you if it's natural. They don't want you to hear nothing about God's product. But God has such that can cure us. Okay, my name is Cheryl Tidwell. Back several years ago, I ended up having to go to the doctor because it got to where I could not talk. That went on for about a year. Doctors told me I had polyps in my throat. I uh, looked Jeff up on the internet, got his old ET, and within three months I could speak, and I haven't lost my voice since, and I still take his tea. My mother, back probably two years ago, had a gas leak in her house, and she was taking Jeff's old ET, never got sick within minutes of going into her house. Several people got sick. It was so bad it even killed her plants. But because she was taking Jeff's old ET, she, it really never phased her. Uh, my boyfriend ended up, he was bleeding from his colon, had been for about a year. I had got him to take Jeff's old ET. He had been taking that probably a year, had a colonoscopy done, and he didn't have cancer. So, Jeff's old ET works. I believe in it. How's that? Have you recommended it? And I do recommend it. Okay. Hello. 
My name is Jeff Beck. I'm not a celebrity. I'm not a guitar player. I am a person that has dealt with cancer twice in my lifetime. My former wife had brain cancer 19 years ago when we had three children all under the age of four and she was sent home to die. She went into the hospital to the emergency room with a temperature that they could not bring under control and after a month and a half in um, the hospital and put into an induced coma and all that they did trying to figure out what was going on it turned out that it was brain cancer and they did a surgery on her took out um, a part of the brain right in here she had a rare form of lymphoma, lymphoma in her uh, brain at the time and um, when they figured out that it was brain cancer they sent her home to die after doing the chemo, radiation, and uh, the surgery, it was still the same prognosis. She was going to wind up dying because there was nothing they could do for her. Well, somebody told us about this uh, Aldi tea, this herbal tea, and we both thought that it was not going to work. It was crazy because chemotherapy, radiation, and the surgery didn't work. And we thought, what use is a tea going to do? So what we did was we shared it with our doctor, showed it to him. And he told us, he said, what harm is it going to do for you to try the tea? You've had chemotherapy, you've had radiation, and you've had surgery, and nothing's worked. Your cancer is still growing, and it's growing somewhere else. If you try the tea, and it works, what harm have you done? If you try the tea and it doesn't work, what harm have you done? You're still, you're going to die anyway. So uh, we decided to try the tea. And uh, 19 years later, almost 20 years later, she's still alive. She um, is suffering from the effects of the chemotherapy and the radiation, but she's still alive. And there's a lot of... Um, testimonies on my website about people that have decided to try the tea. I've had people that have used this tea for a lot of different things. Bonnie, she used it for her uh, stage 4 liver cancer. She was sent home to die with her liver cancer and I talked to her over the phone and she decided that she was going to use the tea and um, she did and four weeks after she had started using the tea she had uh, gone back to the doctor she had gained 10 pounds and the nurse didn't recognize her because she was looking so well and Thomas he had liver cancer high blood sugar and uh, heart problems and somebody told me about him and he got in touch with me and we started talking and he decided that he was going to use the information and he used the tea along with my 13 practical principles that I go over in my book and um, he went back to his doctor and his doctor was talking with him and he said well the doctor told him he said I don't know what you're doing but he said your liver cancer is gone your blood sugar is the best I have ever seen it and your heart problem is gone. Whatever you're doing, keep doing. And people have used it for bladder cancer, lung cancer, for uh, high blood sugar, and for hypertension, for high blood pressure. People have used it for lupus and cataracts. And it's, it's good for um, a lot of different health issues, cancer, allergies, uh, arthritis, asthma, hay fever, heartburn. People have even used it for multiple sclerosis and lupus. One lady used it with her lupus and she only took three two ounce servings and saw a difference in her lupus. Chronic fatigue, autism, migraines. It helps with a lot of different health issues. People have seen a difference 
in um, their cancer, some of them within three days, they've seen a difference in their cancer and, and the 13 principles discussed. Now, this uh, tea has not been approved by the FDA. It is just a herbal tea, a detoxing tea to help purify the blood. You can just try the tea and see how your body will be affected in a positive way. Marlin was dealing with breast cancer and decided to use it and after two weeks of using the tea she went back to her doctor and they decided not to administer the chemotherapy as planned. And um, Mary, she took the tea for a detox. Now I feel better and my varicose veins are clearing up a little. My diverticulitis, her diverticulitis started coming back and she took the tea and now she's feeling better and she was giving the tea to a family member with a feeding tube. Johnny, he had uh, lymphoma cancer and he started using it. He was in pain 365 days a uh, year and he started using it and started getting better. His cancer spots were getting smaller and the bigger ones were getting smaller and he talked to his doctor, told the doctor told him to keep taking the tea and ask him for some so they could give it to the more critical patients to see how it would work for them. And his tendonitis is getting better. There's a lot of people that use it for a lot of different things, like I say. Hi, I'm William Go from Singapore, cancer survivor. I share with you my secret. 2001, I was diagnosed with uh, nose cancer. I was bleeding from the nose every day. Dirty my shirts, get uh, blood flowing to my mouth even while I was sleeping. Um, my health improved when I joined Nature Sunshine. The company found out that I got nose cancer. They bring in specialized herbs for me like uh, pawpaw, BT, uh, super antioxidant. I'll show you some of these products. This is one of the best kept secrets in the world. This is Canada's unknown cancer remedy. I'm not the only person to benefit from this. Hundreds of uh, testimonies from all over the world mainly in Canada and uh, USA, people who get well from even terminal cancer. So I happened to read about this Isyakti and uh, my friend Dr. Presley Ng recommended me this to go with super antioxidant. Two times Ah, sorry, two capsules three times a day on an empty stomach with this one also. One capsule with a meal twice a day. ET goes very well with liquid chlorophyll. Okay. This brings more oxygen to my body and uh, oxygen is toxic to cancer cells according to Dr. Otto Walker. So this worked very well for me. Today, I am 100% cancer free. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Rod Friend. I'm speaking from my house in Spain, where I live, and I want to just speak a little bit about um, a cancer I had uh, earlier in the year. And I know that many people are scared stiff when they when they have a cancer diagnosis, and it can be a very frightening thing for people. And I think the whole um, experience of cancer is fraught with fear and anyway I just want to tell my, my story quite briefly almost exactly a year ago um, I discovered a lump growing in my neck just behind the collarbone here and um, I was obviously I didn't hang about you know I got it looked at straight away but um, because we live in Spain things happen a little bit slower here perhaps and it wasn't till October that I had um, a test done and they found some cells which were not altogether very good 
and um, in the end of January 2011, um, I had a, a brilliant operation, and they took this lump out, which was about four by six centimeters, um, and they described it as a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, very aggressive, and uh, advocated my going on straight on to the chemo and radio, radiotherapy. And I had a rooted objection to both those things. I regard them as very unnatural, very toxic, and in fact they are carcinogenic themselves, so I didn't think it was very helpful. And I was lucky enough to have discovered um, Essiac, the famous herbal compound uh, pioneered nearly 100 years ago by Rene Case, the um, Canadian nurse, who acquired the recipe from Ojibwe Indians. And um, I started taking that, and I discovered that uh, cancer cells only flourish in, a, in an acidic environment. And acid foods are things like uh, all sugars, alcohol, wheat, dairy, all that. So I, I changed my diet and gave all, all that up. And so early in April, no, early in May, I had some cat and pet scans and also a, a bone marrow probe. And it showed no migration, no metastases uh, going on. And I think the medical people, the oncologists, were very surprised by this. Uh, delighted as I was, you know, but very surprised um, because the surgeon in my case was on the record as saying actually that without chemo this man will die. And uh, they were concerned that I was not taking chemo and not having, not interested in it. And um, but nonetheless, though my all my tests showed clear, and I know for a fact that I can say a big thank you to many, many people around the world, fa family and friends, who sent me, you know, good wishes and, and, and best wishes for my health and very positive thoughts and prayers. And I said that to the doctors and I said, you know, this is a factor that you have to take into account as well. Um, a really important factor, you know, in the whole picture. And so um, it was... Uh, only the other day, actually, in early August, that I had what I thought would be my last pet and cat scans, and they wanted me to have a big barium swallow and take a whole bottle of chemicals, and I suddenly thought, I don't think so, no, I'm not going there. And um, I turned my back on the hospital, I've had enough of that, and I'm perfectly confident that by a maintenance dose of ESIAC on and off, maybe for the rest of my life, if necessary. Um, I will remain cancer clear. I, um, this is actually back in the, the late 90s. I, I guess it was about 98 or 1999, something like that. At any rate, um, I had some kind of a problem. Uh, I didn't know what it was. It, it, uh, it was to, it was uh, my this general well-being was not good at all. I was dizzy all the time and just just having a, a tough life. And it went on and on and on and on. And finally, um, I uh, coughed up some blood one day, and it really scared me. And I scared the bejesus out of me. So I, I called my doctor. I went in to see him right away known this doctor for a long time, so her friends really called me in right away. And I uh, brought a sample of my sputum in with me. And uh, um, he assigned me to uh, uh, have uh, some um, uh, lung x-rays done, uh, and which I did. The next day, uh, he called me in, and he had the technician with him, and he said, uh, Roy, you have a... Uh, uh, it looks like you have a tumor in your middle lung. And I know there's such a thing as a middle lung. There's a, the right and the left in the middle. And uh, this, this is pretty well deeply embedded. It was um, five centimeters in size. He said, I'll have you go see a thoracic surgeon and I'll take it from there. Anyway, so I went to see um, whatever the doctor's name is, I can't remember now. Um, 
I was a little relieved because then I, I finally knew what was wrong. Would have been wrong for quite a while. Went to see the surgeon and uh, he said, well, he said, um, it looks about the, the size of a tumor that I, when I normally see it, uh, uh, five centimeters in size. He said, what they could do is uh, uh, come back and see me in uh, three weeks and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have another x-ray taken and you come in to see me and I'll tell you what kind of a tumor it is. We'll know by the amount of uh, growth that has uh, taken place in that time, in that three-week period. So I said, do you mind if I, uh, I already um, looked into SEAC because I've, I've been talking to uh, the distributor of uh, the product a couple of years before and read a whole bunch of uh, testimonials about it. So I said, well, it's pretty inexpensive stuff, so why don't I just you know, give it a try and see if uh, at least I can do something about it. If it works, great. You know? um, I, because SEAC is used in the treatment of uh, cancer. Anyway... Um, which I did, uh, and uh, I contacted the distributor. He told he, uh, he told me through a friend of mine that um, that I should take double up on the amount that I take. This is a very pleasant tea type of tea uh, material, like drink, tea drinking material. Anyway, um, so I, I took it for the uh, the three weeks. I asked my doctor, the, the, the thoracic surgeon, if he thought it was a good idea. If this would disturb things. And he said, no, no, it's fine. You take it or not take it. It makes no difference. So that's what I did. I took the, uh, the SD Act for the month and doubled the dose. I went in for, for a uh, uh, chest x-ray to compare against the one I had three weeks prior. Went to see the, uh, the doctor. And he said, uh, well, he said, this is quite amazing. He said, the uh, tumor has shrunk to 0.5 centimeters. It's almost gone. Uh, he said, what I want you to do is come back and we'll do a CAT scan uh, in three months just to make sure that it's not hiding somewhere. You know, part of it isn't hiding somewhere. So uh, we'll just make sure of that. And he said, I'll, I want you to bring your sputum samples into the lab uh, every week, I think it was, which I did. And um, uh, a couple of weeks later, he, he let me know that the sputum samples were clear. No more blood in my uh, sputum. And I was getting about a mouthful of May, which is quite a bit. It scared the hell out of me, you know. And uh, I went in for a CAT scan uh, the following January, which is three months later. It was gone. And uh, so, you know, uh, was it SEI? <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, it was. just as good a chance that it was. Yeah, good. Well, Steve, give me a little bit of background on your, your cancer story. And if you want to, state your full name or just Steve or whatever. Okay. I'm Stephen Bush. I, I live out of the Dixon area, and uh, I'm a local artist. I do sign work and artwork. And, uh, uh, I was diagnosed at first with cancer back in uh, 2012, and uh, I had... Uh, pretty large tumor in my esophagus. So uh, I took treatments and managed to get rid of that one by using a natural product. So uh, for about five years or so, I was uh, pretty much cancer free. But uh, here, uh, just this last year, it was in uh, December of, uh, of 2016, uh, I was sent because of my blood work that my oncologist seen. and said it didn't look right again, so I was determined that I had uh, a reoccurrence of this tumor coming back and then another smaller one down in my left lung. So uh, I immediately went on chemo, and uh, the chemo was mentioned that it wasn't a really hard chemo, but it was one that would not mess with your immune system too much. So I agreed to it, and I did it for so many months, but over a period of time, and to start with, my fingers become completely numbed out. And it got to where that I couldn't do my artwork as well. So I got so weak that I had difficulty breathing at night. So at that point, I decided back in the earlier part of the 
first of this year, which was in March, that I completely went off of chemo, and my doctor agreed because it was messing up my hands and stuff and my breathing patterns. And so I had discovered from a person that was in one of my art classes that I had struck that she had used the product called Alter Detoxification Tea. And immediately I was interested in find out because she was she was cancer free at the time too, so immediately I got to researching about it and we discovered that it remarkably had helped very many people. So uh, my sons, they, they went online and ordered it for me. So uh, I started using it right there about March. So after several months, I've been using it I managed to gradually completely shrink down the tumors. And this in mind, I would tell you, is staged at stage four until gradually over the last so many months, that is nothing showed up anymore. No and I feel 100% better. I got my strength, most of it back, and I feel great. And I had no doubt in my mind that this is a fascinating blend of natural remedies that really does help cancer patients. And I'm a standing survivor from stage four cancer esophageal and uh, the small one that was in my lung and I no longer have it and I just got my results back and I've still continued not to have it. Oh, that's so I'm wonderful. very happy to go on camera and uh, mention this. And uh, I know for a fact that it helps diabetes because I'm too a patient of type 2 diabetes and uh, it's got to work controls it so well that I can skip my doses of medicine and eat a whole lot more things that I can get by with now and uh, that's about my story well that's good that's wonderful I know you just let me look at your results and it's got no 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 all the way down through there no suspicious no no sightings that looks great Doctor, can you tell me what, uh, I've read online that uh, SCI can actually grow and expand the tumor and actually cause some damages, but then it will actually break down the cancer in the tumor to alleviate. Um, but I, I've read that online. Can you tell me if it has or if that's, if that's its reputation or um, what type of results I can expect? Theoretically, in soft tissue tumors, yeah. yes. It will usually, and I say usually not every case, grow a little bit, and then shrink. For the simple reason, it, it starts shrinking from the inside out. In other words, uh, the nucleus is in the center, and it starts reducing it. it starts, and the outside naturally follows and reduces it. And this makes it easier for a surgeon to remove. Uh, it also cuts some of the vascular part of it, the vascular being the blood supply to it. And uh, yes, definitely, it can do that. I'm not saying it does it all the time, but it has done experimentally. It has been noticed. And in conjunction with SCAC, I find that it's, I've read also that it's recommended to change your diet and change your habit and exercise routines in conjunction to help the SCAC work, not just to sit there and take SCAC and think it's going to cure all the problems all the time, obviously. Definitely, it has to be done, change your lifestyle. Yeah. It's not like allo allopathy or Western medicine. Oh, you, you got cancer and so on, uh, here's drugs, here's uh, radiation, here's that, but carry on eating pizza and hot dogs and all that stuff. Uh, it doesn't make any difference. Well, in holistic medicine, and there's two ways of spelling holistic. One of them is H-O-L, I-S-T-I-C. Uh, uh, Holy, that means spiritual. And the way that is so, should be spelled, and it is spelled, W-H-O, means the whole thing, the whole body, in its environment on planet Earth. So you have to change your lifestyle. And I can say that the cancer uh, comes in, and once you start noticing it, you need a diagnosis from a, a reputable uh, institution, uh, x-rays and things like this, and uh, then you have a diagnosis. It's more than time to change. You should have changed years ago. I had a better lifestyle. Uh, no abuse, sleep well. And I take it from my, my people, the Iroquois and the autochtones, and even in China. There's, uh, the day is divided in three conditions. Eight hours of sleep, you never borrow from sleep. Eight hours of work, eight hours of play, you can intermix those two. But never borrow from sleep. 
This is where you replenish your body. This is where your immune system replenishes. And whatever invading organism, it's there to fight it. So uh, you have to change your lifestyle. It's more than time. If you have cancer, <clears throat> it's more than time to change your lifestyle. And change, we mean also, let's cut out sugars, and then <laughs> possibly milks. <laughs> Uh, a lot of things eat more natural and we say uh, natural or whatever organic organic is a false name anything that grows is organic whatever with or without uh, pesticides and anything else so uh, that's a misnomer organic eat natural as much as you uh, same thing with eggs same things with chicken I mean they're full of hormones full of things okay so organic is a way to avoid hormones and to get chickens that are more yep. free range and um, to give uh, so they're not under this duress and this stressful life. So you do agree with the organic? Uh, it, it's not necessarily labeled the way we properly, but it's not necessarily natural. More I mean, natural, right? Yeah. You, but you still like. But you're not a. You, you were saying to eat vegetables, but if it's not organic, it's okay. If it has uh, pesticides, it's not okay to have the pesticides. Well, where are you going to get the, the natural one? Yeah. Nowhere that I know of, unless you have your own garden. Okay. Today, I mean, it's all, everything is spiced with the whatever else they have. Fertilizers. Yeah, and fertilizers and everything. Right. And the FDA approves them. Right. Do you think there'll ever be a day that SEAC is acknowledged as a remedy or a cure or... Uh, it is recognized as is by, yes. the, by the population, by the patients who took it, the That's patients correct. who survived. That's the feedback I see as well yeah. and from uh, my, my research, I agree. See, in Western medicine, we don't cure anything. We treat everything. And, uh, well, hope for the best, and we'll try our best, and if you do, okay. If you don't, not, I'm not saying anything against uh, Western medicine. Uh, definitely not. They have a great science, uh, but they are one thing. They have nothing with nature. For instance, you treat a patient with cancer in an in allopathy or Western medicine. They don't tell you don't eat pizzas and hot dogs and all that stuff. They don't tell you anything. I carry on with that. I mean, this stuff will kill everything. Yeah, it'll kill you too. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> Have you had ex uh, experience with children using SEAC as a product? Oh, yes. Them? Oh, yes. Uh, so, with that said, is it SEAC for everybody? As far as I know, yes. Yeah. My mother took it. She died at 101. I took it. I made my children take it. I'm sure Shelby takes it. I take yeah, it. <laughs> I have the bottle open right now. Yeah. So, uh, how long have you been taking it for? How long have you been taking it, Shelby? 20 years. So, however so long we've been. Yeah. I treat, don't take it every day. Did you tell me your father was taking it as well? My, my father, yeah. My father lived to be 97. And yeah, I certainly had him on it for the last 10 years of his life. But he took it just about every day. Yeah. He had prostate cancer at one point. And what did it do for his prostate cancer? took the radiation, but it never came back. Yeah. Okay? He was never bothered with it. Once the, the treatment was finished, um, I put him on the SCAC. From that point on, I had him on SCAC. After the chemo? Yeah. So chemo, radiation. Radiation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He was never bothered, and God, that was probably 15. That sounds wonderful. 15 years, 16, uh, longer than that.